Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Dr. Kashif Pirzada. This is a lecture on mesenteric ischemia. This lecture is presented on behalf of the PA program at the University of Toronto Faculty of Medicine. This lecture is licensed under the CC by SA license. Um, you can copy, modify, and distribute this work, um, but you have to attribute the original and subsequent authors of this work. Now, mesenteric ischemia um, is caused by obstruction of arterial or venous blood flow in the mesentery. This can take the form of, uh, of occlusive uh, injuries, such as emboli of the arteries, thrombosis of the arteries or veins. It can also be non-occlusive, such as hypoperfusion from CHF or shock. The main arteries involved are the celiac, the superior mesenteric artery, and the inferior mesenteric artery. Um, there's lots of collateral flow in the in the gut. Uh, the intestine is able to adapt to decrease requirements, and you can actually have a no, up to 12 hours with no injury with a reduction of 75% of flow. Um, but after that, you run out of time, so mortality rate can reach up to 60%. Mostly because the affected population is usually very sick and very old. This is a diagram from uh, Venerable Gray's Anatomy showing your aorta, uh, your inferior vena cava, um, your celiac plexus, and your superior mesenteric uh, artery. You have uh, a view of the celiac uh, plexus here showing its branches. This supplies mostly the stomach, the liver, the spleen. Um, you also have your superior mesenteric artery here which supplies the ileum to the mid um, and uh, mid distal colon and your inferior mesenteric artery which shows your distal tra which supplies the distal transverse colon to the rectum risk factors for mesenteric ischemia are your usual atherosclerotic factors advanced age atherosclerosis shock valvular disease uh, sometimes you can get vegetations on valves that can shoot outwards uh, cardiac arrhythmia such as AFib, which can lead to, uh, lead to thrombus formation within the ventricles. Recent MIs, um, abdom uh, abdominal cancer, hypercoagulability disorders, peripheral vascular disease, a family history of DVT or PEs, and prior thrombotic events. Clinical findings, uh, generally you will notice a rapid onset severe paraumbilical abdominal pain. Uh, you'll have the traditional pain out of proportion to physical findings. Uh, again, this is hard to quantify, but um, generally you'll have a patient in excruciating pain, but a very benign abdomen. There can also be nausea and vomiting. Um, mesenteric vein thrombosis can lead to more um, chronic presentations. Hematochesia is a hint that colonic ischemia is present. Abdominal findings on exam, uh, the abdomen can be benign, there's often distension, peritoneal symptoms are often absent, and with later presentations, once you've had a bowel infarction or injury, you can have gross abdominal distension, absent bowel sounds, and mental status change, usually from shock and hypovolemia. Tests that you can order, um, your labs usually show um, a high white blood cell count, a metabolic acidosis. Your lactate can be elevated, but it's also a very late finding. Basically, you have to start having bowel injury or infarction for this to happen. This is 77% sensitive. Amylase can be elevated in about half of patients. A D-dimer, um, not, um, not useful for ruling it out, but um, a negative test can often rule it out, but again, I wouldn't rely on this. If strong uh, suspicion, you should go straight for angiography. Usually that's not available, so a CT angiography is, uh, is probably the most practical route in most centers. An MR angiography is 96% sensitive, though, but the odds of getting that in Canada, good luck. Uh, treatment uh, it depends on the uh, type of insult present, but your goal is to restore blood flow ASAP. You should give IV fluids, um, use an NG tube for suction. You should avoid vasopressors because that will exacerbate the vasoconstriction and lack of perfusion. Um, anticoagulation is an option, um, and often surgery in cases of intestinal infarction or perforation. 
You can try uh, intravascular or generalized thrombolysis, angioplasty, stenting, embolectomy, um, and surgery in the end. Thank you very much.